We are streaming worldwide live on the internet uh, on YouTube. Let's wave audience members at our camera. Hello, welcome. Um, we are also live here in the Shepherd Learning Commons, what I like to call the happiest place on earth. Um, and we have some great presentations for you today. We have four fantastic speeches. We've been doing tier speeches. So we've had tier one presenters, tier two presenters. And this is the pinnacle, Mrs. Ball. That's right. Today is tier three. And tier three allows us to have this larger audience. And obviously, with presenting in front of an audience of peers and audiences from afar, it takes grit. And how appropriate we're going to be talking about grit today. We are looking so forward to all the speeches today. So excited to listen to all the great uh, pieces of information, the examples, and everything else in between. So without further ado, thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. Round of applause, and we will start with our first presenter. Let's kick it off for Sadie. All right. Imagine walls surrounding your life. Do you wait for them to come down, or do you take grit and break through? Grit is persevering when things get hard. Grit is being strong when sometimes not everybody around you can be strong. Grit is having passion for what you believe in. When you use grit to keep pushing, you can go places in life. Like Gerda from A Night Divided, who's a girl stuck behind a wall, trying to break out of a life she's not content in or Malala, a women's right for education activist, who's never scared to stand up for what she believed in. Or Marie Curie, a scientist who lived through life-changing challenges and worked to reach her dream. These people have grit, and for them, that's what they could turn their life around. Grit gives you power. Grit means that in the hardest of times, you are still willing to face a challenge. When you've overpowered that challenge, you are powerful. Power can be shown in different ways, like in Malala Yousafzai, who is a women's right to learn activist. She's been shot for standing up for herself. Malala says, I had two options. One was to remain silent and be killed, and the second was to speak up and then be killed. And she was shot, but she recovered and became a powerful person, one to stand up for herself and others. She is powerful, but her grit and what she has been through in life has taught her to use her power for others, using your power for good. That's not something everybody can achieve, but it was something Marie Curie, a woman scientist, was able to do. She had faced many challenges. She had lived through poverty, family death, and the constant fear she wouldn't make it anywhere. She had to work to earn money for college, even when she no longer liked her work. In the book Marie Curie, it says Marie soldiered on until her three-year contract ended. She spent three years with a job she didn't like. Then did she get to go to college, so her hard work paid off. She gathered her courage and her grit, and she became powerful. You can become powerful, too. Has anyone here ever been knocked down by a show of hands, both mentally or physically? Okay, you can put your hands down. But getting back up again, that's where there's grit. Somebody who had grit was in from a night divided was Gerda. She was building a secret tunnel to escape a town of communism, and she had to do hard things to escape. Over and over, she has to carry a heavy bucket up a ladder. She says, I'd lost track days ago of how many times I had made the climb. I could now do this in my sleep. I was so tired, who knows? Maybe I did. She had challenges flung her way. She was relentless. She didn't give up and was able to clear out tons of dirt from the tunnel. She pushed back harder, always problem solving. And in the end, her relentlessness saved her because she never gave up and she made it out of that place. She made it just how Marie Curie made it. Marie Curie could have given up so many times in her life. She was educated, but not to her satisfaction. So as I said earlier, she worked to go to college. She was a woman, so she worked twice as hard to prove she was twice as smart. She pushed and discovered amazing things. In fact, right here on the periodic table is her element, radium. When things get tough, we must have courage. When things are at their lowest point, you have to have grit and keep moving on. That's courage. Courage means yes. 
Maybe you are afraid, but you will keep moving, just like Malala. Malala could have stopped her blog. She could have given up, but she didn't. She had courage, and she put her life on the line to inspire others. She was warned. In the book Malala Yousafzai, Defender of Education for Girls, it says, Notes were slipped under the door of the family's home. Warnings were also posted on the internet, but Malala would not stay quiet. She did things nobody else was willing to do, just like Gerda. Gerda was young, but she had more courage than anybody. Yes, she was afraid to escape, but if it meant a better life for her and her family, she would do whatever it took. And that right there is another example of how grit and courage work hand in hand. She had grit, and she pushed, and she had courage to keep her strong. At one point, she used to steal a pulley, and she's scared to be caught, but she goes ahead and does it. In A Night Divided, it says, I fought against my instinct to go back inside. That would have been the smart thing to do. But then I reminded myself that tunneling beneath the death strip was hardly a smart act, so at least I was being consistent. So yes, she is afraid. But she takes courage and reassures herself. She does it, and it pays off. Persevere when things get hard. That's grit. Grit gives you power, makes you relentless, and it works hand in hand with courage. So now I want you to think again. Imagine walls surrounding your life. Do you wait for them to come down? Or do you take grit and break through? I hope the answer is clear. Break through. Take grit, be powerful, and as Marie Curie once said, I was taught that the way of progress was neither swift nor easy. And no, it's not easy. But as long as you have grit and keep pushing, you can do anything you put your mind to. Did you notice that I forgot them in the beginning? To forgot the what? I forgot to use my slides. So our audience members are going to do what they've done all speeches long. They're going to open up their Chromebooks and provide feedback for our people. I'm going to mute myself. Here, I'll get him all set up over here. Great. So this is how you turn it. Mm -hmm. Okay, is it on? Is this on mute right now? It'll be on. Yeah, they're gonna turn it back off, or they're gonna turn it on in just a moment. So let's keep giving good, equitable feedback. Sadie Mandel was her name, and she did Marie Curie and Malala, which is a hard one to spell. She did two people, yeah. All right, just another minute to, to wrap up our feedback. You can show us that you finished your feedback when you can, just go see if it works? can submit and close your Chromebooks and put them on the ground. We've had a great start to our day, so I'm excited to keep this going. All right, audience members, let's hit submit. And then Mrs. Trudeau and Ms. Vanden, if you wouldn't mind, get Will's presentation up. Beautiful. All right, and then without further ado, let's give a big round of applause for Will Austin. <laughs> Hello, my name is William Austin. I'm a Shepherd student. Today I'm going to give a speech about grit. When life throws you to the ground, you get up. 
As we know, the word fail, F-A-I-L, stands for first attempt in learning. You, me, and successful famous people have all failed. But do you know another characteristic we all have in common? It's grit. Grit is when you never give up. Grit is overcoming a hard challenge. Grit is working hard over and over. There are countless examples of people having grit. But today, I'm going to talk about just three very different characters that all share a similar story of working hard to meet their goal. Allie Nickerson, the main character in one of my favorite books, Fish in a Tree, was bullied for dyslexia, but she worked hard and learned how to read. Kobe Bryant, NBA legend, worked hard every day on and off the court to become one of the greatest of all time. And Ray Charles, even though Mr. Charles is blind, he worked hard and learned how to play the piano all by himself and became a Grammy Award winning musician. All these people are connected because they have grit. Allie Nickerson from the book Fish in a Tree had faced dyslexia her whole life, a learning disability that makes the words on the page move around while reading them. Dyslexia is really hard for Allie because she never told anybody about her disability, and her whole class thinks she's just a troublemaker. But on page 175, she finally asks the teacher, why can't I read, and gets the help she needs. After that, she learns how to read, begins to make new friends, and gets voted for school president. With grit, she pushed through her disabilities, and now Allie enjoys school. The next person who showed grit is Kobe Bryant, one of the most elite basketball players in the world. Even at a young age, Kobe was at the gym every day, practicing to become the best player he could be. Because of his determination, almost all of Kobe's teammates had trouble with him, because Kobe would often say his team didn't work as hard as he did. His grit for the game helped him become one of the top five offensive players of all time and win five championship rings. But unfortunately, he died in a helicopter crash in 2020. The last person that showed grit is a Grammy Award winning musician named Ray Charles. Ray Charles was blind and never gave up. When he was younger and started to go blind, he didn't stop living his life. He kept doing chores like cutting logs. Everyone doubted Ray because he was blind, but he didn't doubt himself. Later in life, he pushed himself even more and learned how to play the piano all by himself. In the book titled Ray Charles on page 699 to 701, it tells a story of his hard childhood. Young Ray got sent away to a blind school. While there, he got tricked into a running race. Two kids held a rope and two kids raced from one end of the rope to the other. However, this time the end of the rope wasn't held by a kid. It was tied to a metal pole. Wham! Ray ran right into it. At that point, he learned he's going to have to overcome great challenges in life. Ray never gave up. Ray rose to the top and became one of the most famous songwriters and piano players. So you see, grit can lead to greatness, like Allie Nixon in Fishing a Tree with her dyslexia. She got bullied, but still pushed through and learned how to read. Or Kobe Bryant, he pushed himself every day and became one of the best basketball players of all time. And Ray Charles, who went blind and still made music and learned how to play the piano. When everyone else told him to give up, he never stopped and became a Grammy Award winning musician. All these people had grit, and so can you. Thank you. All right. Let's give Mr. Omar a clap for that. One, two, three. Fantastic stuff, Will. Nice work, man. How right. scary him. You did great. Yeah. Right. You can take, um, I'm going to go back to your first slide. Could you freeze uh, this slide for me? Yes, you're right. Nobody notices when you accidentally forget a part. <laughs> Thank you. I did. Okay, and we're going to get feedback for Will. And I can help Sydney. Thank you.
All right. Been a great audience so far. We've had two fantastic presentations. We have two fantastic more to go. Again, once you've given that feedback, you can show us by closing your Chromebooks and by putting it on the ground. I got one more mic for you. You clip that right to your lapel, and that's wireless. My friends, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you now Sydney, who's going to talk about grit. Intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. This quote is so interesting to me because not only is it an amazing piece of advice in life, but also because it is said by one of the smartest people in the world. My name is Sydney Burnover, and today I'm going to talk to you about grit. This speech is not about being smart. This speech is about persevering, having a growth mindset, and having courage. Today I'm going to talk to you about three people who have shown incredible grit throughout their lives. The first is a girl named Gerda Lowe from the book A Night Divided by Jennifer Nielsen. The second is a real person, a scientist named Stephen Hawking. And the third person is a musician named Ray Charles. All three of these people have shown grit, and by the end of this speech, you'll know why. To begin, all of the characters that I have listed have a few traits in common. The first is that they all persevered through their challenges. All three of my characters have gone through terrible challenges in their life and have had to persevere through them. For example, a character I mentioned earlier, Gerda from the book A Night Divided by Jennifer Nielsen. Not only was she separated from her family at just eight years old when the Berlin Wall went up, she also formed an escape plan with her older brother Fritz just four years later. Well, they decided to dig a tunnel under the Berlin Wall, knowing that they would, if they got caught, they would be put in jail and possibly killed. This didn't go without challenges, though, because while they were digging the tunnel, Fritz accidentally hit a pipe, and this forced Gerda to stand in the tunnel holding the pipe for hours while Fritz went to get a replacement part. She knew that if she let go, they would lose weeks and weeks of progress, but she held on. In the book, it says, so I held the pipe and to my senses and to my courage, bundling them together and knotting them within my heart. This shows that she worked hard to hold on just long enough for Fritz to come back. Another example is from Stephen Hawking. Can I ask, how many of you have walked to school or worked before? All right. Well, you would know how hard it is if you've ever walked in the rain or the snow. Now think about Stephen Hawking. When he was just 21 years old, he was diagnosed with a condition called ALS. ALS means that you are slowly paralyzed and forced to be in a wheelchair. You also can't talk and have to use a computer. But the most horrible thing is that you're completely aware of the entire time your body is slowly shutting down. Does anyone remember the ice bucket challenge a few years ago? That was a fundraiser for people like Stephen Hawking with ALS. This didn't stop him from becoming widely known as the smartest man in the world, though. Until he died in 2018, he would drive himself to work every day in his wheelchair until he got a new job that was too far to wheel himself to. Even then, he still found a way to get to work by himself without any help. This shows that Stephen Hawking never gave up and found ways to work even though and advanced his career and never gave up when an opportunity came. Finally, I want to talk about Ray Charles. He was a musician who grew up in a rural segregated town in Florida. When he was seven years old, he was diagnosed with glaucoma, which made him go blind. Ray had to relearn everything he knew, but eventually found out a way to tell, um, to tell different objects apart. All right, I need a volunteer from the audience. Um, Sloan. OK, so stand there and close your eyes. I'm going to hand you an object, and you're going to have 30 seconds to figure out what it is. A book? Yeah. You can go sit down. So this is basically how Ray Charles lived for a really long time. He had to use all of his senses except sight to figure out what things were. These pe he persevered through many challenges to get the ability to play piano and sing at the same time. And if you've ever done it, you would know that's very challenging, especially if you're blind. These people all show how persevering can help you with your challenges. The second trait that all these people have in common is having a growth mindset. All three of the people I've mentioned so far have displayed this quality. The first example is Gerda. 
When she was living on the east side of the Berlin Wall, she was constantly subject to public brainwashing inside of school, inside of her apartment building, and on the streets of her city. She could have conformed and given into society, but no matter how hard the government tried to brainwash her and her brother and their mother, she always listened to her, what her father had told her when she was little and never gave up. This is what led them to digging under the Berlin Wall to reunite with their family. The second example is Stephen Hawking. All right, can I ask a question? How many of you, by show of hands, play a sport, any sport at all? All right, hands down. How many of you play an instrument? All right, hands down. Now imagine this. You've played that instrument or sport for your entire life, and you love doing it, but one day someone tells you you can't do it anymore. There's no reason you just can't. How, now imagine how that would make you feel. Now imagine Stephen Hawking. One day he was told that his entire life was going to change. He was going to not, never be able to talk, and he was going to have to use a wheelchair. And that, imagine how hard this was for him. This is, he was just 21 years old, but he never quit and still worked hard to make new discoveries on black holes. Did you know that less than 20% of people survive more than five years with ALS? Did you know that less than 10% of people survive more than 10 years with ALS? Stephen Hawking survived for 50 years with ALS and became one of the smartest people ever. This is amazing. Finally is Ray Charles. Ray went blind at age seven, which meant he had to relearn everything he knew. This didn't stop him from being a kid, though. In a short story called Going Blind by Ray Charles and David Ritz, Ray wrote, I played around like all kids, getting into more trouble than I should and less than I might. Even though he had glaucoma, it didn't stop him from being a kid. He still played and did his chores like all other kids should. All of these people show that it's important to have a growth mindset to reach your goals. Furthermore, one final trait that all these people have in common is courage. At the end of A Night Divided, Gerda and her family were escaping under the Berlin Wall through a tunnel that they had dug. When all of a sudden, the police officers dug into the tunnel and started shooting at them. Everyone told Gerda to run so that she didn't get shot, but she refused to leave without her brother. This shows that she had courage because she could have left, but she stayed with her brother the entire time and even made sure he got through the tunnel when he had gotten shot in the leg. This shows incredible courage. Another example is Ray Charles. He showed a lot of courage because when he was just eight years old, he was sent to his school alone for the blind and deaf. He had never even left home before, but this school was in their place. All the kids were mean to him, and they made him run into poles and hurt himself. But he showed courage because he never gave up and still went to the school and worked hard. The final example is Stephen Hawking. When he was in college, he suffered with a condition called ALS. He was very brave, though, because he suffered from ALS for a very long time. Can you imagine going to sleep every night and not even know if you, if you would wake up in the morning? He was very brave, and he even had three kids, Lucy, Robert, and Timothy. He was very, through his entire life, if he showed courage. All three people showed courage through very scary and challenging situations. In conclusion, all the peace people have proven that there is virtually no challenge you can't overcome when you have grit. All of them, whether they're really fictional, musician, or scientist, have shown perseverance, a growth mindset, and courage to overcome their challenges and be successful. I want to leave you now with the quote I started my speech with, and I hope you see it in a different light now. Intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. Stephen Hawking. Thank you. been an excellent audience. We've had three incredible speeches. We have one final speech. As we mentioned before, 
We've done all of our tier one speeches, all of our tier two speeches, and now we're on our final tier three speech. So every single sixth grader in the entire school has given a shepherd talk, which has shown such grit. And this is the last one coming up. I'm very, very excited about that. Have the cards. Yeah. I'm gonna take the cards off. Okay. I feel like I should cue you in with some some music here in a minute. Okay, so we're gonna close our Chromebooks up. Just so you know, your um, your clickers right there. And um, if you want to put your gloves when you're done, you can put them up on that chair. All right, so we're going to close our Chromebooks to show that we are ready for our final presentation. And if we could unfreeze our screen, thank you to our amazing people who have helped set this up. We could uh, actually, let's, let's give a shout out to them right now. We have Mrs. Trudeau, Ms. Vanden, Mr. Steckling. Let's give a round of applause to all of them for helping us with all of our technology issues. All right, and without further ado, uh, the... The great one here, uh, let's give a nice round of applause for Will. Can, can I have a volunteer come up real quick? Nelly. Do you think if I punch you right now, it would hurt? Uh, probably, yes. Yes? Okay. If he punched you right now, do you think it would hurt more? Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> See, if you were beat up by very strong people every day for a living, raise your hand if you would quit. That's what I expected. See, Muhammad Ali was a boxer. See, boxers have to be very gritty. And no, I'm not talking about the dance. I'm not talking about the mascot. I'm talking about the trait. Persevering, never giving up. That's what grit is. I've heard many different definitions of grit when I've listened to these speeches. I've heard perseverance, never going, giving up, going through hard times. The gritty five, once. Justine. <laughs> but this is what I think of it. I think it is that do something you don't want to do sometimes, but it leads to success. See? If you have grit, you can lead to, it leads to success every single time. Guarantee you, if you use it the whole time. Where do I start with Muhammad Ali? See, as a black boy, we'll say, he was not, he did not really have a great lifestyle since when he was a kid, not many people respected black people. But he went through it. See, he grew up in Kentucky, in a, in a very poor family. But one thing he always liked to do, he liked to punch his own bed. He would be very angry about how his life came out. He did not, he wanted to be famous. He wanted to be big, rich person. But if I was going to tell you that boxers back then made a lot of money for every fight, I'd be lying. They would make $300 a fight, which is not that much. They have to pay for their training, which is probably oh, maybe a hundred dollars for him, for Muhammad Ali. Now you're down to two hundred dollars. Okay. Well, you still have to pay for food. Hundred dollars, probably. Eh, maybe even more. See, it's not very easy being a boxer because it's you have a risk of being severely hurt. So. Many people don't box for very long. They box for maybe 10 years and then they're done, okay? Their body, it took too much. See, Muhammad Ali boxed for 21 years. He won 56 matches and only lost five. He trained and trained. I think one of his best quotes really shows great. I hate every minute of training, but I say don't quit, suffer now, and you live your life as a champion. That's one of his most famous quotes. See, he didn't 
like training. <laughs> hey, who does? You just punch a bag, lift weights. He didn't think it was fun, but he did it, and it paid off. Become a world heavyweight champion many times. He had many famous fights. He played such boxers as Sony Liston, George Foreman, and many others. He, when he was 22, he fought a very strong man, Sony Liston, who at the time was 32 years old and the best boxer in the world. He had to fight him. See, he won because he used grit. Sony Liston, he would give him punches all over the place. But Muhammad Ali would back away and punch him again. See, I bet a lot of people know this. Who knows Muhammad Ali's quote, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. That's kind of what he did. He would, he would punch him a few times and then back away because he knew he wasn't the biggest, he wasn't the strongest. But he knew he was the fastest. If someone's going to punch right there, he would dodge it. He could dodge almost any punch from almost anybody. See, a lot of people have used grit. I've heard Ray Charles, Mira Curie, Stephen Hawking, Kobe Bryant, a lot of people. But if I was going to do any one of those people, I would say they used most of their grit during their career when they were doing the thing that's hard. But Muhammad Ali used it his whole life. As a kid, he said, that's the quote. He used it as a kid, he used grit, poor family, he used it as a father. Kids aren't that easy to handle. He used it as an average person, just a guy walking around, maybe giving a speech like this. You never know. He used it as a boxer because, as I showed you, they punch you a lot. They hit you a lot, but you got to get back up. That used grit. I just a man praying. Oh, I forgot to mention. So, he was a Muslim. A Muslim is most of the people who are Muslim are black. He was not well respected for that decision. And who knows what a prime is? Like, if you're an athlete, you have a certain amount of years where it's like your prime. Okay, he didn't have one. They did not let him box during his prime. During that whole time, like he said, he hates training, he had to train for four years. Just four years, no boxing, no matches. He did it, he was a hero. See, after his boxing career, he lives in a small apartment, because like I said, doesn't make a lot of money as a boxer. Lives in a small apartment. One day, he saw that guy who was helping, trying to jump out his apartment window. He was, he was a suicidal man trying to commit suicide. He didn't, Muhammad Ali could have just let him do it. Could have just said, okay, you can jump off the building if you really want to, but he didn't. The guy said, no, let me do it, I hate my life. But he kept doing it. He never gave up on it. Because, I mean, who would let somebody kill themselves? No, they're by themselves. Who would save them? If they said stop, who would, who would save them? Okay. See, he never listened to the stop. He just kept doing it and used grit. And you can use grit too, and you can become successful. Thank you. All right, let's give Mr. Omar Clap one, two, three. All right, we're going to give feedback to Will. And ladies and gentlemen online, this is where we say goodbye. This is our, uh, we're going to give one last big round of applause to all of our speakers, not just in tier three, but tier one and tier two. And we're going to say so long. Thank you.